I'm here at RBH Lifestyles in Dennis, Kansas, and RBH Lifestyles put our spider stacker on for us, and we have Leroy in here getting some work done on right now. And they said it'd be okay if I did an interview with them, so I got Jack Mayer here and Mark Jones. We're Dave and Karen from Watts on Wheels, and we sold our sticks and bricks to RV full time now that we are retired. We travel with our heavy duty truck Leroy, our two KM motorcycles, our DRV Dixie, and our smart car Zippy. Don't forget to subscribe and click on that bell to be notified when we post a new video. And uh, I thought I'd make a list of questions to ask them. So I would like to start out with... Uh, so it's not a test. Yeah, it's not a test. Right. <laughs> you know all the answers. <laughs> so first of all, I'd like to know, why did you get into the business and create RVH Lifestyles? We wonder that every day. <laughs> <laughs> so basically we did it because we were users of this equipment and we wanted certain features and, and content that we couldn't get anyplace else. So we thought, well, we'll try to do it ourselves and see what we come up with. And that's the basic reason why we did it. Um, we, we, Danielle and I had traveled the country, it's now 20 years, and had built many HDTs, uh, three prior to starting the business. And um, really didn't, really had to go out and try to find this vendor here, this vendor there, another vendor over here. And the quality varied amongst all of them. It was always hard to get something done. You had to work at it. So we thought, well, what can we do to try to pull it all together? So we did everything bumper to bumper on the truck. Uh, that was the basis of the business. Right. And we knew the community had a lot of demand and, and was looking for support as well. And there wasn't any place to go, as Jack said. So we put two and two together and said, oh, we got a little bit of time on our hands. <laughs> did we know? We're, ret we're retired. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> But we got a lot of help too. And yeah. We'll, we'll talk about Jonah's uh, a partner with us now here, and he runs all the operations, and you'll see him on camera running around here. So that's what started it. I think one of the questions that people want to know about having a heavy duty truck for RVing is what are the advantages of having it? Well, the, the first one that everybody will tell you is safety. They're, they're, they're just easy on the equipment. So you're not bouncing your rig around a lot and that sort of thing. But more importantly, they have good brakes on them. And you're up high and you can see far ahead. Um, Volvo's engine is designed to dive under the floor in a crash. Mm. Volvo's the only one that crash tests their cabs. Um, so the roll cage is so strong. Oh. So Volvo's are designed so that you can open the door in a front end collision. The door can still be open. Mm. That's a steel kind of cage around that area of the truck. And the back of the cab is all steel. Um, not true on all trucks. The top part is composite, but the back all around where you're sitting is steel. So they're a very safe vehicle. The, the second area would be just capability compared to a pickup truck. You've got a tow vehicle that's of similar weight to the trailer, so the physics are in your favor. Whereas with a pickup truck, it may be rated to tow that weight, but then when you try to stop it, it doesn't work quite as well. As well. So. Again, safety, but capability of pulling mountains, hills, more equipment. And that's the two main reasons why people might end up migrating there. Whether you know you're going that direction or not, we didn't start out there ourselves as RVers. Uh, we both migrated into that because we needed more capability. We wanted to improve safety. So that's the, as of today, that's our choice, uh -huh. is to move into a heavy-duty truck platform. The other thing is durability. I mean, a pickup truck is, is only going to last so many miles, especially pulling a heavier trailer. It's just hard on it. Whereas these kind of loaf along pulling any recreational trailer. Um, it's really, they're designed for 80,000 or 120,000 pounds total weight. And durability is there. So if you buy a truck that has, you know, 400,000 miles on it, it's got a long life ahead of it. Um, you could put another four on it easy. Are there any disadvantages? So the, the biggest disadvantage for a lot of people, and we get this from a lot of our customers, is somebody will have sore hips or knees or something like that, and you, you know you do have to climb into these. It's not like a pickup truck. A pickup truck, what I call the super pickup trucks, which are the F450s, 550s, 5500s, um, they can tow a little bit more. They're a little bit higher, but they're nothing like these. Um, so these are a little harder to get in and out of. The good thing is they have really good grab rails that make it safe so you have good hand holds and you can kind of pull yourself up in it right. but as far as a disadvantage to me that's the biggest disadvantage some people find only having two doors to be a disadvantage mm -hmm. um, 
you know, it really depends on your mission profile and what you want to do with it. Right. You know, we've got the extra steps. That's right. On ours. You do. Yeah. You have the only extra steps that yeah. we've ever done. Yeah. And you also have Freightliner and a QW here. Yep. So you do work on them as well as yep. Volvos. We just started migrating in, into those platforms by request. Does anybody consider size to be a disadvantage? It's an intimidation at first. Mm -hmm. uh, I think once they become acclimated, I mean, you went through the experience. Once, you, like anything else, once you get some experience with it, it's not an issue anymore. There is some clearance disadvantages, but as far as driving the truck or yeah. operating it, you, you start to wear it, as you know, after using it all. Uh, I think another area that some people are challenged with is learning the platform. It, it's not like an automotive platform. It's a completely different mm. technology. It, the way it operates, the way it's worked on, understanding how to troubleshoot, understanding what parts and tools you need. It's a different, it's a, it's a new learning curve. You're now in the garage. I'd like to ask you what kind of products and services do you provide? We've tried to assimilate all the services necessary to build a full unit and to service it after sale. So there's really not much we can't accommodate. Most recently, we've even done full interior. So we can do parts, order parts, uh, in some cases, we refer people where to go to get the parts if they're on the road and they don't have to go through us. But we'll service the vehicles annually, maintain them, upgrade them. The only thing we talk about seriously with somebody is if they have an exotic request for something to fabricate. You know, we try to standardize as much as we can when you get into 100% full custom. It, it's limited on based on our capacity and time. But other than that, there's really not much we can't, can't do for you. So it's a complete life cycle product from from concept, we can help somebody refine their concept and develop it. Mm -hmm. We give them lifestyle advice if they want to hit the road, because we have that experience, we've been on the road for many years. Um, and then bumper to bumper on, on the truck. Mm -hmm. And that would include the buying process, acquiring the vehicle. We have a dealership, of course, so we can help process the vehicle through our dealership, get it converted, change the titles, transfer it to you, help you get set up with insurance, Financing, the whole bit. Uh, registration. Right. We uh, do financing on new trucks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Used so, trucks are still an issue with financing. That people have trouble with used truck financing. Mm -hmm. Most of our customers pay cash mm -hmm. for their used trucks. I think the thing we we lack the most right now is ready now inventory. Um, ah. We just haven't got ahead of the curve on the builds to have actual inventory, as you can see in the parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> What's your most popular conversion? Is it for the smart car? Yes, for sure for the smart car. Mm -hmm. Carrying something. On yeah. The bed, yeah. But the smart car bed can carry an ATV, a trike, as you see here, the Scully trike, um, you know, Can-Ams, the motorcycles. There's the trike right there. Oh. Um, so, so that space, which is 70 inches that we allocate to that smart car, can carry a lot of things. Mm -hmm. Well, can you kind of point out what you got sure. going on with this one here? This is a rat rod. No, just yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is a test fit of, a, of our premium bed. And the reason we're test fitting it is because it's unique in that we're, this trike here is going to load onto this bed. So uh, normally we would have this body worked and painted before we even set it on the truck. We're, that's our, we have jigs that we do everything with. But because this is a unique application, we chose to test fit this and then get all the anchoring down for the lift system and test it before we take it to body and paint. And mm -hmm. this will be paint matched to this truck. And it's a brand new 2021 chassis. 2021. Mm -hmm. And what we do with this is we'll sandblast it, then it gets a base powder coat, then it gets a top powder coat on it, which we typically use gloss black. Then we body work it to get welding imperfections out of it. So it's, it approaches car quality. It's not quite car quality, um, but it's very, very good. Um, then we primer it, and then we body work it again if necessary, and then we top coat it. We use Imron paint typically, um, and then clear coat it on top of that. And then last but not least, we'll put bed liner over all right. of that. Bed liner goes up here yeah. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and some in the back. You got some nice storage in here too. It's about, with a drum box like one we have here, it's about 550 square cubic feet. That, that, that one is a four-door aluminum drawn box. We also do a two-door steel drawn box. So, so all of this style bed has three areas here for ramps. Mm -hmm. You'll notice this is a little bit different. 
remember this all gets powder coated inside so mm -hmm. there won't be rusting inside of this it'll protect the interior then we put an HDPE liner which is a slick material in here and that goes up to this area here all right so this protects the front edge so when you put a ramp on here and slide it in you know where it's yeah. a sacrificial strip it's sacrificial. we configure this bit in three basic configurations uh, we can we, we can put doors here we call them well tail doors where this half here opens up this one was configured by the customer to be welded no storage here but it utilizes this space here for storage if you choose that option we also have under hitch storage option which you see a door here and that frees up all the space here for what we call wet storage so like sewer hoses, blocks of wood, anything you want that, yeah. that you don't mind getting damp when you're going down the road. This is all a wet yeah, storage area. Yeah, this is all wide open in yes, there, right? Yes, it is. It's a lot of room, a lot of room. Yeah. And, and so those are our basic options. So you either have no storage, no storage, and everything else you see, or you have what you see with well tail doors and no storage, or this configuration that you see here. So there's three basic options. And of course, there's large boxes all around the perimeter of the bed. These are very oh, large, yeah. deep boxes. Oh, yes. oh yeah, you can put uh, quite a bit in there. And again, all that will be powder coated eventually. Our next step is to have a custom toolbox that would be made to fit in that space with drawers that roll out. That oh, would be there you go. Out. And uh, then one thing you'll notice is different on this bed versus other beds is we have Frenched in taillights. These are Ford Raptor taillights or Ford taillights, Ford pickup truck taillights. Right. And that's what allows us to have this space available to put a box in this way instead of sideways. Yeah. That was the cornerstone of this particular bit design was how do you free up this space for storage where you have to have wrap around lights and they need to be DOT, you know, so, mm -hmm. you know regulatory and that's where all this lighting comes in yeah, and that freed up this whole rear skirt for this application so and then you got it where you can step plus up you, there yeah you got lighter. built in steps there on the yeah, sides those, so. are, those are aesthetic as jack will yeah they, these these are mostly aesthetic they are steps and they are functional and we have handholds here that you can use there's rods that go in here mm -hmm. but we consider them mostly aesthetic and there are holes here that you can see that will have marker lights in them no oh, okay. those are actually um, marker stop and turn oh okay and, and they're, they're eye-catching yeah yeah they're right yeah yeah, yeah it definitely and if that doesn't work we can put a propane nozzle in there and you can have a flames <laughs> yeah a i like option. that always a good option what's some of the most unusual configurations or complexity things that you've done well we had these customers that wanted to stack two spiders <laughs> on their bed oh yeah really <laughs> <laughs> I would say that's the most unusual and complicated we've done. Kind of thought so. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> One was we were retrofitting to your existing body. Yeah. You know, if we were designing a body to go with, it would be a completely different exercise. Yeah. Yeah. But that's probably the most um, challenging mm -hmm. that we've, we've done. But as you see, we're doing some, yeah. you know, a lot of other biking. For inquiring minds, I want to know, if I wanted to single out and I have a new bed put on and I want to put my smart car up there. What kind of cost for the conversion of the bed? What well, would it, it would depend on the bed that you're going to do and, of course, your needs and wants because there's lots of options. Um, so you can go crazy with the options. We discourage people with older, higher mileage trucks from doing that. We don't like to see people overinvest in the beds, mm -hmm. um, you know, where the bed ends up costing them more and bed and accessories cost more than the truck itself did, a lot more. Uh, you could certainly do that with a bed like this. Th this bed, the typical customer that builds this bed, which is color matched to the truck, and typical accessories on it for just the bed itself, is in the 35 to 38 range. Um, and, you know, that, that gets them a, a fully functional bed that will hold a smart car, that sort of thing. And the other style of bed that we have that you'll see out, out by the truck row when we go out, um, we call the modular bed. Um, on that bed, we're looking at eighteen to twenty-one thousand for the typical customer. Um, you could do it for less, but the typical customer ends up around eighteen to twenty-one. And that includes all the accessories required, you know, to load your vehicle on the bed. Right. You know. Do you recommend people change out the industrial commercial hitch to an RV hitch? That's a good question. Yeah, definitely. 
You need a suspension hitch to protect your investment in the trailer. Uh, these trucks have air ride systems. If you look down in here, you'll see the size of these airbags. This is a brand new 2021 20, chassis, so it's all clean. But those airbags, although are great for us as passengers, and as you know, you have three layers of air on these trucks. You have the axle suspension, frame suspension, you have the cab suspension, and then the seats are on air. Mm -hmm. That's great, but you're transferring a lot of energy from this vehicle to the trailer if you don't suspend it on air. So we can show you, we'll show you this bed configured out here with uh, a hitch in it and chocks. But there's a lot of small harmonic vibration that puts a lot of energy into a trailer. And we've seen the evidence of not doing that with customers that brought in broken trailers and broken hitches. Mm -hmm. So we use the ET suspension hitch. We now have it manufactured right here by us. So we're high, very involved in the engineering of that hitch and that's what we're using and recommending right now. Can we take a look at what you have in inventory? Sure. So why don't you show us some trucks that you've completed? The so you, you sold a rat rod inside. That's how it starts out when we trial fit it before we do any body work on it. Here's a finished truck. Also, this is an 860, so it's a polar roof version of what you saw inside. So this is what the bed looks like when it's all done. It's really the same thing you saw inside. It's just finished, so it looks a little different. Um, you can see the quality of the finish on this. It's, it's a little dirty, but um, here's our chalk system that we use for smart cars and, and for other purposes. And these are adjustable fore and aft. Um, strap the car down really good. We use through the wheel straps. Um, with smart cars that works very well because they're, they're off slotted wheels. Um, in, in other cases people use baskets. We like this system because there's nothing back here to reach to to try to hook up when you got the car here and you can't reach it. This truck has an aluminum drum box on it and it actually has a solar panel on the top. And the solar panel is for the, the, what? The, so, the solar panel will keep the starting batteries charged up um, it really doesn't, this truck has an inverter in it. It's really not supplying a lot of power for the inverter right. like you would have on an RV. It's just keeping the starting batteries um, from depleting. In a lot of cases, customers um, don't have the ability to plug their truck in, you know, when they're in a campground or when they're in a fairground or someplace. And so this will keep the batteries up if you're there for a long time. Okay. Um, many of these trucks sit for a month or more at a time. Mm -hmm. So oh, there we go. This, this one actually has a drawer in it. Yeah, Can't you also put refrigerators or freezers in there too? We do. We 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 um, size for the Domenic. Yeah, the it is size for the Domenic, and we have power back here, so you can plug them in. And this is the nice little box up oh. here where right. odds and ends end up. Yep. You you'd think this isn't very deep, and and it isn't incredibly deep but you'd be amazed how much stuff you get oh, in there. tools oh yeah all kinds of stuff and it's it's easy access we consider that also wet storage yeah i was yeah. going to say yeah that uh, so you're all if you have contain things in containers it's right. safe to put in there but or mm -hmm. cords or stuff yeah. you don't care if they get a little wet mm -hmm. and that that yeah, down there is hitch. also your wet storage yeah it goes way far forward to the front of the hitch here oh so yeah it's a lot of room this, this truck is set up with video so this this is the video connector for the trailer to plug into. So you could have three cameras on your trailer. Mm -hmm. This particular truck has a DVR security system in it, so it's always recording all nine channels of, of cameras that it has, um, as long as you have it turned on. Is this, so this for sale? This this one is for sale. Yeah. Good question. I thought you were going to buy it, Karen. <laughs> yeah, this this truck is for sale. It's a demo truck, and it is has about 9,500 miles on it now, um, and it, it's a 2019, so it's a nice truck. It has everything that we do practically on it. It has idle-free electric, electrical APU on it, so the APU runs off of batteries We're and stuff. We're a dealer stuff. for idle-free. That's we, one yeah. of the services we didn't talk about earlier, so we can install idle-free. This right. is the suspension hitch that we were talking about. Uh, you know, and mm -hmm. you know, it rides on airbags. The sled does goes up and down, and you're towing off these dog bones up here. And it gives you redundancy because you got double tow shafts here that your pressure is against, and it's auto adjusted with a air leveling valve, just like on the truck. Mm -hmm. So air from the truck supplies this hitch, and this separates the trailer from the truck. And with cameras on it, and we've got video, 
you'd be amazed at how much movement there is back here between the trailer and the truck. Oh, yeah. it's, it's entertaining to watch <laughs> for some people. There's this, our truck. There's Leroy. It had uh, his nose surgery. has been removed. Yeah. Yeah. He's, He's getting getting, getting a nose job. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Little paint touch up. Yeah. And a new door. So you were asking about what we can do. Yeah. There you go. There. There's. Yeah. There you go. And a new starter, yeah. and a drum seal, and yeah. a couple of I mean, things. Above. Who knew the guy was going to stop that yeah. fast? <laughs> <laughs> so show us what else you got here in the field available. Or? Well, we're working on this M2-112. Yeah, this, this M2-112 is going to have a similar bed to this on it. Slightly slightly reconfigured, but basically the same bed. Skirted bed. Yeah, it'll have a skirted bed on it. And it'll have a gooseneck hitch on this one. It's going to pull horses. You notice your trucks are all two wheels, four wheels. Um, what do you think about the single? Well, that one's this, single. This one's single, single here. And the one in the shop was single. Right. Oh, uh -huh. So our new Volvos, we typically order a, a wide base, what they call a wide base tire on the back. Some call them super singles. That's really a Michelin name. But the wide base tires rut track better. You know, the highways have these ruts in them from the trucks running over them all the time. You get them and you kind of yeah. squirrel around. So these tires really improve that considerably. It's a, it's a major, major improvement. For our application especially, because yeah. they have lighter loads. And the other thing is it's it's a little bit more comfortable and smooth ride. And it's one point of, you know, you have one TPMS sending unit, one oh, place to yeah. add air. And I, keep in mind the miles, you guys drive more miles probably than anybody in the RV world a year. <laughs> you know it's not that many miles in a year. No. So No. Yeah. So you're not, you know, for our app, there's lots of forum debates about wide bias tires. We don't get in the middle of that, but for our use, we like them. What else you got over here? Look at that blue truck a second to the end. In the past year, there's been a lot of requests for leaving trucks tandem rather than singling, and there's a lot of personal reasons why some people do that versus others. If you want maximum storage, single is where you get the maximum storage. If this this most of these customers typically may or may not be full timers. They may have it as a recreational use on the side for their vacations and stuff. So for them taking the time to single it and having five hundred plus cubic feet of storage isn't a necessity. Or or there's just they like the looks of a tandem axle truck. So this is a bid design that we've come up with that we've compacted a lot into, including ramp storage back here underneath the frame, underneath the hitch. Oh, okay. And uh, in, in most cases, there's bearing steps here, like on this truck that's beside us here, this gray truck. So we don't even have a storage box here in mo most cases. So that's the only storage you have. But, you know, things kind of go in waves. And boy, for the past year, we've seen at least 30 or 40 percent of our trucks have been like this. Yeah, I'd say that 30, 40 easily. But this is an example of the type of work we can do. I mean, this is a custom box here that we made just for this space. Yeah. So it goes all the way back to the frame. Mm -hmm. Unlike a manufactured box, which is typically 18 inches. And shallower. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, and you know, it's a, it's a high quality, really nice box. Heavy steel. Oh, yeah. yeah. And it's huge. Oh, my gosh, it is. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you could get in there. About 27 cubic feet in there. It's a lot. <laughs> yeah. I can tell you exactly. Yeah. Here, Mark, get in there. Let's see. <laughs> and, I and, could in my younger years. And, and this is just powder coated. It's yeah. not been painted. So this is the quality money. powder coat that we put on it. We, we consider mm -hmm. this a sports utility type bid. And it's a lower cost platform. But it gives you basically the same functionality. You can load a smart car on here. You'll notice what's unusual. You asked a question earlier about some unusual conversions. This customer is actually wanting to drive a Jeep up onto it. Now, the numbers don't work out in this configuration to have a Jeep and pull a trailer, unless it's a bumper tow, mm -hmm. which, which they can do. But he wants to be able to take the truck only for recreation with the Jeep and stay in the truck. So if I'm starting out thinking, I might want to get an HDT, what do I look for? Where do I find one? How do I know it's a good one? Good question. Yeah, that's a that's that's a hard question. It's a classic question. The first thing you should do is educate yourself, and and we help in that process. But there's a lot of material out there that's available. And the best thing you could do as you're educating yourself is to go to the HD one of the HDT rallies. Uh, that is probably where you'll get the most information the fastest, and it will not be a waste of money. You will save more money than you spent going to the rally. 
So education is the first thing. And then where do you find a good truck? It's, it's, there's lots of good trucks out there. It's just how do you know if you're not a truck expert how to find them. We can find you a truck um, or we can give you guidance in finding your own truck. Many of our customers bring us a truck or they transfer them through our dealership. They go find it, they negotiate it, and then we do a dealer to dealer transfer. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and then we build it up for them. And a couple of these trucks here in that case. Yeah. The other thing, you know, we can do is we can find the truck for you. We really like the customer involved in that process. We prefer the customer to do that. So, so the, the bottom line on sourcing the truck is we, we try to consult you, assist you. The way we typically work at RVH is once we've had preliminary discussion and you show interest and you want to move forward, we do an engagement letter with you and there's a $3,500 engagement fee. That money, 100%, goes towards the project. But that, in, that buys you a slot in our, in our building process on our calendar and it uh, commits you and us to you in reverse so that you get our time because you know, there's only so many hours in the day. And then through that, we consult you on what, what, here's what you should look for, here's how it should be configured. You would go out and do your own search, we'll assist you in that search, and you, we find the candidates. Ultimately, it's the customer's decision if they want to buy that truck or not. How long does it take you to do a conversion once you get us on the calendar? The raw period of time could be done in six weeks as far if you just worked on one project at a time. Uh, sometimes, especially this year, with all the COVID activity, sourcing parts has been difficult at times. Our shipping takes twice as long, and so we think we're going to be done in two weeks, and we have one part that doesn't show up. So, you know, we ask for patience on that, but six weeks, if you compressed it all down, you could knock it out in six weeks. But typically, we tell customers to allow two to three months yeah. just to get you into the funnel and then start going through the process. Right. And Sometimes they think of things they want that they didn't think of at first, and so that adds a little bit of time to it. So I don't think there's ever been a customer that didn't add on. It also depends on what kind of bed you're building. It's obviously a lot easier to build this bed here than it is the fully skirted bed. Yeah. So I get a truck, you convert it for me, and they've never driven one before. Do you guys provide any training? So what we do is equipment orientation, 100%. Uh, try to show you everything you, that we can transfer knowledge to you about about the equipment. We then have a relationship with professional trainers who can take you on the road and you basically are their customer at that point so we refer you to a professional trainer. Sometimes they'll do it from here and we have an RV park uh, so you can stay here and he comes in and he parks in the RV park as well and he takes you on the road and he trains you in your equipment. So you got the whole package from trying to find a truck or buying a new truck to converting it to get training to you got the whole thing right here. Mm -hmm. That's what we try to do. Are you guys going to be expanding anymore? I mean, you've already grown into this new building yeah, here. Let's talk a little bit about we're in our headquarters location here, and we're in rural America here in Kansas by design. And the reason we like being out here is one, uh, we're in between all of our different suppliers that we use locally here. We have about five different locations that are typically involved with producing this product, a full build. And that's everything from uh, fabrication to uh, cutting steel parts for us, uh, paint and body, uh, bit liner, whatever. We, we want to be in between all that. The other, other reason for being here is that we're in an area that there's very, very low regulatory uh, building codes, so we're able to expand easily. We purchased this lot across the across from us most recently, which you can see is somewhat overgrown. It's not in service yet, but we now have that to expand into. We also own six lots up the road that we purchased. So we're in a good place here to continue to bring more and more activity into this location. But we're a Boeing model, as we say. We outsource a lot of components that we design. We own the intellectual capital to. So we do the CAD design and everything here, send that out, we have the parts cut, fabbed, whatever, to our specs, and then we bring it here and we fab and we assemble it. So this is our, our version of the Boeing assembly plant. One, one of the good things about this area is it's got a lot of manufacturing heritage here. And the, the ability to fabricate metal here is really, really high yeah. end. Yeah. So we have several fabricators that we use, and we're able to get anything we want out of them. Right. 
I mean, there's water jets, there's lasers, there's largest, everything. Largest water jet in Kansas is here. Hmm. Yeah, I noticed that bed looks like it was cut with a, a, a jet. That was yeah. cut with a water jet. Yeah. yeah. And, and this bed, we didn't mention this earlier, is unusual. It's what you don't see that makes it special. Is a, That bed is 100% out of sheet metal to start with. And we cut parts on a laser jet. We use a computer brake to break the flanges and the C-channels to our specs. So, the, so it's not off-the-shelf C-channel. So the traditional yeah. way to form up a bed like that is on top of the rails you put cross members that are, that are, that are either tubing or C-channels. Mm -hmm. And that's what we don't do. That's where we break the sheet metal. Oh. It, it makes the bed lighter and it makes the bed stronger mm -hmm. um, doing it that way. And right. a lot more flexibility in the fabrication process. Right. Yep. But it requires CAD, you know, CAD engineering, and it requires the equipment to be able to produce that type of Right. Parts. So it requires, a, in this particular case, they use a laser to cut it out based mm -hmm. on the CAD. Then they have a computerized break that breaks the shape that's necessary. Mm -hmm. And they cope all the edges, and all built in to the CAD. So when the when the side rails and the cross tubing fit together, it's a perfect fit. Mm -hmm. Perfect it's, fit. You can't get a credit card. Yeah, you get even welds that way. And oh yeah. More better duration on the welds. And mm -hmm. the penetrations there, and we size the sheet metal to thicknesses that we want depending on the engineering specs. So, mm -hmm. you know, the outside rails would be quarter inch, and joists is going across maybe three sixteenths. Right. For example. So right. A lot of flexibility in that. So. A but lot. the cat the cat adds quite frankly some time to the project but we think it we think the end product is so much better it's worth the investment so yep that's something that differentiates us 100 percent of what we do is everything's great. cut square and just how it should be and all that yeah and we build these on jigs so they're, they're not built on the truck yeah the, the traditional yeah. Weld the truck out of the show on the truck right so we don't want the trucks in a in a weld shop right where that all that metal in the air that dust it's all through the truck. It's all that really grinding hard. and all that. Yeah. Yep. Is there any last anything else you'd like to add or say? Well, I would I would just say I'll, I'll just go first. And first of all, we appreciate you guys. You've been great customers. We we enjoy your channel. We follow it and watch where you're going and your adventures and or and, misadventures. And misadventures. <laughs> but we we appreciate your transparency because we live the lifestyle as well. And we understand that's the real deal. That's the way it is. And you have to embrace it with the right attitude. And we we think what you guys do is great. So we appreciate People it. People say, well, I don't want to call you and bother you with all my questions. Don't don't feel that way. Feel willing to call us at any time. Uh, we're happy to talk to you, even if you never buy anything from us. We'll help educate you. Email works well. Email so. works really good because you have an answer to refer back to um, when you forget what I said or what Mark said. Um, so we encourage email, but, but don't feel like you shouldn't be calling us if you're not ready to buy. Um, more education you get, the better off you'll be. And your website is? RVHLifestyles.com. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, please give us a thumbs up. We'd love to hear from you in the comments below, even if it's just to say hi. Don't forget to subscribe.